Hey guys, welcome back to this new video. And this is an ongoing video in my ongoing series of the TikTok ads, dropshipping, e-commerce playlist. So if you are interested in anything to do with TikTok ads, e-commerce or dropshipping, there's a playlist called TikTok ads. Go ahead and watch all the videos before this, or actually watch this video first, then come back. But in this video, we're gonna be going through the strategies to maintain a high ROAS within TikTok ads while you're scaling and while you're testing. If you're running with low budgets, you wanna make sure that you're spending on ads and ad groups that are making you money. You don't wanna be losing money. So I'm gonna take you through the details. This is very high level marketing stuff, but I'm gonna take you through in detail exactly what it is you need to do to be making sure that you're not wasting money on TikTok ads. This is very much down to an optimization standpoint. Now on this channel, I'm not trying to sell you anything, if you're, any, if you're interested in anything to do with e-commerce, I'm gonna share all of it on this. I'm not holding anything back. And my background is very much in marketing. I've been doing it for six or seven years. I've spent millions on Facebook ads, Google ads, and TikTok ads. So I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm a fairly good authority on some of this stuff. So let's get started into what we need to do. So this is just a, a sketch pad. I'm gonna take you through that in just a second. So if you can still see me, uh, this is the TikTok account that we're using at the moment to run our tests. Now we've been doing loads of different tests and different things on this account. And so far, I don't really want to look at, yeah, $180 spent on this account in total. So not actually that much, but I want to take you through something called automated rules. And that's going to be the primary focus of today's video. Now, if you're interested in how we're going to lose, sorry, save money, this is a new campaign. So this campaign here is for our new dropshipping store. This is going to be the new store that we're testing. There are five ad groups in here, and we've just launched those in my last video. So if you haven't seen that video, you can go ahead and watch that and follow through on that challenge as well. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make sure I don't lose too much money, or at least I try and improve the profits that I draw from this. This is obviously all assuming that this makes sales. So the first thing is, are the KPIs. Now KPIs are key performance indicators for those of you who don't know. Uh, and KPIs are essentially the key metrics we need to keep our eye out for to make sure that we're not losing money and we're getting good metrics through the funnel. So the first thing is obviously cost. Now in this campaign, we have five different ad groups. Each different ad group is going to be spending $20 per day. And I need to make sure that these ad groups aren't overspending on something that's not profitable. Now, I think my break even for this product is $25. So I need to make sure that I'm getting $25 or less cost per complete payment. Um, and obviously, if we break even, we can make money on the back end. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing is we look at the cost. If the cost has spent over $5, we can start to look at the other metrics. First of all, if you spend anything less than $5, you can't make a justified decision on anything. There's just not enough data. Now, there are some caveats to that. For example, if you spend $3, $4, and you just see things not working, you can always turn it off. You know, it is a flexible boundary, but I usually recommend $5 minimum. Once we get to the $5 mark, we want to scroll over to CPMs. Oh, and by the way, go ahead and copy or write down these columns. Uh, we've got cost, clicks, CPC, uh, add to cart, cost per add to cart, checkout, cost per checkout, complete payment, cost per complete payment, and then CPM, and then result at the end, but you don't need that. Now, we're going to look at the CPMs. CPMs are very important, but they're not you near know, the be all or end all. If our CPM is anything under six or seven dollars, we're okay. Ideally, for some of these audiences, we should be seeing around a dollar, two dollars CPM. If we're seeing a too high CPM, that tells us that our ads are either not resonating well with the audience. And if they're not, we can double check that by looking at the CTR and we can double check that by looking at our cost per click. If the CPM is high, it could also be down to the audience. You could be targeting a very expensive audience. For example, I try to market or I set up some tests to market my SaaS company, uh, which is in the e-commerce space. So for you guys, it's in this space. And that's this campaign here. If you scroll over, you can see the CPM is almost $7. And the cost per click on this was $6.22. This is a lead generation one, $1.50 cost per click. And these are decent ads. You know, it does well on organic TikTok, but just because the audience is much more expensive, then we compare it to one of these ads, you know, 15, 20 cents cost per click. So very different. And that's because of the ad and because of the audience we're targeting. So like I say, let's come back and we'll just look at this specific campaign. So once the CPM is in the level that we think is okay, there's not much we can do about it. It's just to sort of keep that in mind. The next thing we want to look at is the cost per click. So the cost per click needs to be around 50 cents or less. Now, the reason for this is we want to optimize or at least have the most amount of traffic for our money. If we're spending over 50 cents cost per click, say for example, we're spending a dollar cost per click, right? We are going to be bringing in 50% less or half the number of people into our funnel than someone who is selling the same product with better creatives and better ads, better copy, 
who's getting 50 cents cost per click. So they're getting twice the number of people to their website that we are for exactly the same product, just because they're running their ads better. So we need to make sure that we're only spending on ads which are bringing in a cost per click less than 50 cents. If you're getting 60 cents and you're getting good stats throughout the funnel, leave it, it's fine. Don't turn off an ad just because the cost per click's high if the other stats, deeper metrics are doing better, but we'll get onto deeper metrics in a second. The next thing you want to look at is click-through rate. So I'll just add that to my columns. So I'm just gonna add that now, save that. So if our click-through rate is under 1%, then we've got a bit of a problem. So let's go back and have a look at one of the other campaigns and we'll, we'll actually use another campaign, for example, and now it doesn't make much sense because I'm gonna no data. So let's look at these campaigns I was talking about earlier. These ones, you can see here, 0.3 and 0.1% click-through rate. Now, although the CPMs aren't astonishingly large, you know, if you were to target this on Facebook, you'd be looking at $40, $50 CPMs. So CPMs are cheap, but the ads are appalling. We're not getting good engagement at all on these ads, which means our cost per click is very high. We didn't get any conversions or deeper metrics in this funnel. So I turned the ads off. We only spent $16. Now, if we compare that to a campaign which did well, so for example, we come into this campaign, we got a 6% click-through rate on these ads. Now, this is on the campaign level. Now on the ad set level, there's probably, and in fact, we're no longer running this product, so why not let's show you the ads uh, for this product. So we'll come in, this is the uh, free plus shipping offer we did. So free plus shipping is going to give us a very high click-through rate just because of the nature of the offer. So this is an unusual circumstance. You're not gonna see eight cents cost per click on a normal offer unless your product's really good. So we're coming to the ads here. So you can see those are the ads. You don't, I'm not gonna watch the videos, but we'll just drag that over. And you can see the click-through rate was 6%, 26 and 0%. So here's what we'd do if we were running these ads again. We're no longer running this product, but if we were, we'd come in and see, well, this one's getting a 6% click-through rate. This one's getting a 2.6% click-through rate. The cost per click's basically the same. So there's no point turning one off and leaving the other wrong. But you know, you can see this ad is clearly a better performing ad. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how come this one's getting a 6% and a 2.6% but the same cost? Well, that'd be because of the CPMs. Um, so you can see here, the CPM is almost double what it is on this one. Actually, it's over double. Um, so that's why we're getting probably two of the, uh, yeah, about just over double click-through rate but the same cost per click. So that's, that's how CPMs and click-through rate and cost per click balance out. So, we wouldn't necessarily turn off either of these ads. You know, they're both getting very good click-through rates, but uh, CTR is a very good indicator to see if an ad's performing well. So like I said before, if the cost per click is good, then the CTR is good, you've got a winning ad. If you've got a cheap cost per click, but a low CTR, it's probably because your CPMs are cheap. Now that will work at low budgets, but as you try and scale that ad, the audience isn't responding well, so you won't be able to scale that ad as easily as an ad that was getting like a 6% click-through rate with the same cost per click. Let's go back and have a look at a different campaign. And this will give you a bit more of an insight. So if we scroll down here, we look at something a little bit more realistic uh, that you would probably see. You can see, let's look at these campaigns here. This one, this one, and the one beneath it. So one, two, three. You can see here we're getting a 20 cents, 15 cents, and 20 cents cost per click. These very standard metrics, you know, there's nothing wrong with these wouldn't turn anything off. They're all below 50 cents cost per click. They've all got a good click-through rate, apart from this one, which is getting an 80 cent, 80, sorry, a 0.8% click-through rate. Now, again, I'm not gonna turn this ad off because I'm still getting good traffic. I'm getting good cost per clicks. It does tell me that I will need to work on my ads in the future, but right now that's not the concern. We're looking for deeper metrics. So the next thing we look at is our ad to cart cost. Now, this is where we're gonna come to the sketch pad, and this is gonna be a, a good 15, 20 minute long video. So bear with me. Say for example, we're selling a product, and I'm doing this with the mouse, this is gonna be difficult, for $34.95, okay? And this product price has a product price of $10, okay? Which means our break even on this product, let's just make that line a little bit easier, is $20, or sorry, $25 break even average, right? I can't be asked to do you know, $24.95, but $25 is our break even. So if we spend $25 and we get a sale, we're breaking even, which is fine. I'm happy to break even when I'm testing. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, our next metrics after cost per click and not, sorry, after clicks is our add to cart cost. Now, if we look at industry standards, we usually see a 20 to 25% uh, conversion rate of people who add to cart um, from people who then purchase. Now, 
If you've got a very good store, it could be higher. You could see 30 or 40%, but typically you're going to see, especially with TikTok traffic, 20 to 25%, just because it's lower quality traffic, which means if we do the maths on this, 25% of 25, if I'm correct, is five. So $5 is, you know what, ignore that. Everything is in dollars. I can't be asked to draw the dollar sign. $5 is our add to cart cost, which means at 25%, this is the upper tier, right? Upper level. If we get the best conversion rate from add to carts, which means we need to be having a $5 add to cart to make sure we're profitable. So this is just, this is more of an indicator. We don't necessarily turn off ads because we're getting higher than a $5 add to cart. We are just wary of that ad group. Now, if we get a 20% add to cart rate, uh, conversion rate off add to carts, we will then be unprofitable. We'd need that to be more or less $3.50 or $4 um, add to cart cost to be profit, to be breaking even. So with a 25% conversion rate off our add to carts, we're looking for a $5 add to cart. So if we come back onto here, we come over to the add to cart cost, check, check, check. All of these are below $5. You can see here, I mean, these are all free plus shipping offers, so they're going to be more expensive. And some of these aren't actually conversion campaigns, but this is, you get the idea. So everything's below $5. Excellent. Let's move on to the next one. I will just put something in there that says, if your add to cart cost is $10, don't turn off your ads. And I repeat that, don't turn off your ads because what can be happening is A, TikTok isn't tracking correctly, which is very possible, uh, or B, you're just in a very high converting vein of traffic you know you could see that you'll get a 50 60 percent conversion rate of those ads to carts so only turn off ads if your cost per click is far too high initially or if you're not making conversions and that's how we optimize our ads this is very sort of in-depth stuff the next thing is our checkout usually you'll see that i don't know it's around 60 percent of people who add to cart will then check out and then obviously from checkout you'll then have a conversion rate on that to purchase, which is usually around 40, 50, 60% conversion rate of people who check out. Uh, and that really depends store to store. That's not a very defined figure. So I usually just like to keep my initiate checkout cost 50% less than my break even uh, cost per purchase. And then we should start seeing purchases. Now, this is all very much a ballpark figure of what you should be aiming for. But these are all things you should be looking out for when you're optimizing your ads. So for example, you wake up in the morning, you look at your ads, you've got one ad group, and it's spent, I don't know, $10, okay? And then you come in and you look at your ad set level, so your um, uh, cost per click, and that is sub, uh, I don't know what it was, 50 cents, didn't we? So sub 50 cents, that's a check. That's me trying to draw a tick. You'll have to bear with me. I'll get a stylus at some point. Then we look at the add to cart costs, okay? It's sub $5. So check move on to the next one okay our checkout cost is sub 50 percent of our break even so what's that that's 12 and a half so if it's sub 12 and a half 12.5 we check and then we obviously look at our purchase and if that's sub you know 25 excellent everyone's happy check now like i said to start off with when you're testing these metrics here you'll probably find won't all be accurate. This is more when you're optimizing as and you're starting to get purchases. So say for example, we're getting, we've got five ad groups out of those tests. Every single one of those is making a purchase, but we wanna make sure that we're making profit now. So what we do is we go into the ad group level and we say, okay, are all of my ads making less than five cents cost per click? Yes. If they're not, turn off the ones that are. So now we've reduced the number of ads that we're running. Next thing you look at is your ad group. You say, right. Am I getting ad to carts on this ad group or, or at least am I getting purchases on this ad group? If you're not getting purchases on an ad group, turn it off. Now, one caveat of that is make sure that you're tracking. So if TikTok says you've made five sales, Shopify says you've made five sales, you're fine to base your tracking off what TikTok says. If, however, you've made 10 sales on, on Shopify and TikTok only says five, take everything with a grain of salt and assume that actually each ad group has made twice the number of sales than TikTok's reporting. Other than that, you can use UTM tracking links. Things like Click Magic are very good tools that you can use. So if you are making purchases and they're profitable, leave it on. If you're making purchases and it's not profitable, turn off the ad group. There's no point running to make to lose money. There's no point making sales to lose money. There's no point also saying, well, two or three more sales, at least I'm building data on my pixel. Your pixel and the algorithm doesn't care if you've made 12 sales or 14 sales. It's going to make very little difference. So if you're not making profit, turn it off. If you are making sales, you want to see, well, how can I improve things? Well, okay, my add to cart cost is too high or my checkout cost is too high. Well, there's nothing we can do on the ads at this point. 
well, there are, but there's nothing that you can do on this current ad group to increase, so to decrease your ad to cart cost or your checkout cost. If your checkout cost and ad to cart cost are too high, that's pointing to a deeper issue on your funnel, right? These are all things on your funnel that need to be fixed. If you are getting expensive costs for ad to cart and checkout, what's happening is you're getting a lot of traffic to your website. They're seeing your landing page. They're seeing a big old add to cart button and they're not clicking it. They're scrolling around, they're looking around, then they're leaving. They're abandoning your website. And that means you've got a problem with your ad to cart. You've got a problem with your landing page. Maybe it's your copy. It's not high enough converting. There's not enough people clicking the ad to cart. There's not enough people trying to buy your product. You're not convincing them. And the thing is, if you think about it, right? Five cents per ad to cart, sorry, five cents per click. You're getting quite a lot of traffic for that. What is that? That's a hundred, that's, so that's 10, uh, yeah, that's 10 people on your website. Is that right? Yeah, 10 people on your website who then get to look around on your website before they then add to cart. There's a reasonable amount of traffic. Now with five cents cost per click, you'll probably see an add to cart cost higher than that. If, for example, you're getting a 30 cent or a five, like a five cent cost per click, you're getting 100 people onto your website before one person adds to cart. That's still a key indicator that your website needs improving. If 100 people at five cents per click view your website and only one of them adds to cart, there's a lot of wasted traffic. There's a lot of people who could be buying that aren't. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt because on TikTok, the traffic quality is a lot less. Um, it's, the traffic quality is a lot worse. So you could see your cost per click, so your cost per add to cart being um, higher just because of that. So these are all ways of optimizing your ads and optimizing your, your um, funnel. So let's just do a quick recap, okay? We'll say that everything on this, I don't know if I can delete everything again, no, delete. So we'll just do a quick recap. If you are getting expensive cost per clicks, there's a problem with the ad level or the ad group level. Anything deeper metric from ad to cart to check out to purchase, you wanna look at those and that will give you key indicators whether your funnel needs improving. Now there are things you can do with your ads to help with your conversion rates and that will be things like offers, discounts, those sorts of things. And you can always test those out, but when you're starting off, it's really, you wanna mess around with your funnel or you want to uh, you want to mess around with your, your ads. So that's it in today's video. It's quite a lot, we've gone through quite a lot of detail. It's a 17 minute long video. Um, but if you do have any questions, again, remember you can join my Discord channel. The link is down below in the description and you can go ahead and join that. Shoot me a question. And uh, if you want, we can always chat on Instagram as well. It's Sebastian underscore JWB. So send me a message on Instagram as well. But until then, I will see you in the next video. And thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.